hi everyone today in this video we're going to start this new chapter of accounting that is called bonus and right issue and you can clearly see that there are two things involved in this chapter bonus issue and right issue so that is why we have to break this chapter into two parts first we are going to understand all about the bonus the concept the provisions of the companies act the sebi regulations the general entries and the accounting treatment yeah everything we are going to understand about the bonus and solve its problems and then only we'll move on to the second part that is the right issue and the same thing we'll do with the second part also okay so that is how we are going to do this chapter fine so now let's start and let's understand first what is bonus issue now see bonus issue is really simple all that happens because of bonus issue is reserves and surplus of the company are converted into equity share capital okay money from reserves and surplus will be pulled out and it will be put into the equity share capital is that clear that's all bonus issue is now what is this in total reserves and surplus and the equity share capital yeah and the preference share capital also this is the equity portion of the balance sheet what is it called it is called as the net assets of the company yeah asset minus liabilities so nothing new is coming into the company no cash inflow or cash outflow nothing it is just whatever that exists in the company reserves and surplus and equity share capital just money from reserves and surplus have been converted into equity share capital fine so overall if you see there is no impact on the net assets of the company no so that is why bonus issue is also known as what capitalization of profits profits and reserves have been capitalized they have been converted into equity share capital is it clear because it is given out of the profits or reserves of the company yes if you don't have profits or reserves in the company then you cannot do bonus issue the company cannot do bonus issue now understand there are two types of bonus issue okay and we'll be having a detailed discussion on both of these the first most common one is what issuing fully paid up bonus shares to the existing shareholders for free and the second one is by making the bonus call making the partly paid up shares into fully paid up okay don't worry i'm just giving you a overview over here we will have a detailed discussion okay so let's discuss the first one the first most common bonus issue that is issuing fully paid up bonus shares see here it means an issue of additional shares to existing shareholders yes it's given to existing shareholders only the bonus issue okay existing shareholders free of cost in proportion to their existing holding see what will happen is the company will come up with a ratio okay they will come up with a ratio for example let's just say you know one for every five held what does it mean it means that whoever has five equity shares of the company they will be given an additional one share for free okay you can also think like this see here uh one for every five right so one divided by five that's equal to 20 percent so 20 percent bonus has been announced in the company right so see here existing capital let's just say for example two lakh equity shares existing shares okay existing shares are 2 lakh equity shares of 10 each so now the company has announced that uh, you know the bonus will be there one for every five shares so now you have to calculate how will you calculate it's really simple just take the existing shares existing shares are 2 lakh right 2 lakh into into 1 divided by 5 1 for every 5 1 divided by 5 that's equal to how much 40,000 bonus shares will be issued to existing shareholders right so see here bonus shares 2 lakh into 1 by 5 40,000 shares or you can also calculate it like this by making the use of percentage 2 lakh you know that 1 by 5 is 20 percent so into 0 0.20 yeah so that's equal to 40,000 only the same thing will come okay so now what will be the total shares after the bonus issue existing shares were 2 lakh and now new bonus shares have been issued 40,000 to existing shareholders so the total shares after the bonus issue will be what 2 lakh shares plus 40,000 that's equal to 2 lakh 40,000 shares so you see what happened because of bonus issue because of bonus issue money from reserves and surplus have been converted into equity share capital of course you cannot see this see that over here but that has happened and and number of shares have increased isn't it previously it was only how much 2 lakh equity shares now it is 2 lakh 40,000 shares is it clear so this is what happens right and there will be a proportion a ratio a proper ratio will be there it's not like okay we'll issue you know just randomly like that no there will be a proper ratio proportion in proportion to their existing holding one for every five one for every ten one for you know every two like that yeah. okay that is what uh, issue of fully paid up bonus share to existing shareholder is now understand it's free for the shareholder okay see here 
It means an issue of additional shares to existing shareholders free of cost. To whom it's free? For the shareholder, from the investor, from the shareholder's point of view, it is free. Understand, see, let's take an example of the pandemic. What happened in the pandemic? In the pandemic, government of India made us, what, vaccines available for free. Yeah, we could vaccinate for free, isn't it? Yes. So now, for us, it was free. For the citizens, it was free. But for the government of India, they had to purchase it from somewhere, isn't it? They had to pay money for that. You didn't have to pay money for that. Is that clear? So that's the logic over here. Here also the company, for the company it's not free. For the shareholder it's free, but for the company they have to utilize the reserves and uh, you know the profits of the company, isn't it? These reserves and profits have been realized in cash. Yeah, they have earned this. The company has earned this by making the sales and you know making the profit. They have accumulated these profits. Now those profits have been utilized to give the bonus issue. Yeah, that is being converted into equity share capital. Is it clear? This is what bonus issue is, fine. And there will be no impact on the overall net assets. Net asset will be same only because there is no cash flow, nothing. It is just that, you know, shuffling of net assets has happened. Money from reserves and surplus has been converted into equity share capital, okay? And it's also known as capitalization of profits. Now let's understand what are the different effects of bonus issue that you can see. Now see, the effects of bonus issue are very interesting. The first one is increase in equity share capital in the value as well as number of shares, which you already know, right? Equity share capital will increase. The second is decrease in reserves and surplus. Yes, reserves and surplus will fall because money from reserves and surplus have gone into equity share capital. And the third is no impact on net asset. Yes, the net assets are same only. Nothing new has come or nothing has gone out of the net assets. Fine, it is just shuffling of the net assets. And the fourth is very important, see here, reduction in EPS earning per share and other per share values. Let's take an example to understand this. For example, let's just say, let's just say companies, you know, earning is 4 lakh, okay? And the number of shares before bonus issue is how much? 2 lakh equity shares. And what's the basic EPS formula? Earning divided by outstanding shares, equity shares. So 4 lakh earning divided by 2 lakh equity shares, yeah, before the bonus issue, that gives you the EPS, basic EPS of 2 rupees, right? So now, let's say bonus issue happened, one for every five, and the total shares after the bonus issue increase, that is how much? 2,40,000, yeah, 2,40,000, isn't it? We saw in the example. So now if we divide, it's equal to how much? 1.6667, so you see, from two rupees to 1.667, basic EPS has fallen. Why is it has fallen? And this will happen with all the per share values. Okay, see here, reduction in EPS and other per share values also. But why? Why is it happening? It's simple reason, simple math. See here, to calculate any, what do you say, fraction, any ratio, what happens? Numerator and denominators are there. Yeah? So if denominator increases, yeah, and numerator is same only, then of course, of course, the resultant answer will fall. Okay, is that clear? Number of shares increased now, so basic EPS fell. Is that clear? For basic EPS to increase, what should happen? For any for in any formula, the resultant answer to increase, what should happen? Numerator should also increase and denominator should decrease. But here, numerator is same, earning is same, earning is not changed. Denominator has increased because of bonus issue, number of shares is increased. So of course, the basic EPS will fall. Is that clear? That's the simple math. Now, the next one. Fifth one is favorable act considered by the market. Why is it considered favorable act, this bonus issue? because it gives a perception in the market that the company has lots and lots of accumulated profits. That is why they are going for bonus issue. They have lots and lots of reserves, okay? That's why it's a favorable act. And also the liquidity and many things are there. See here, what will happen is the liquidity in the stock increases. What do you mean by liquidity? Buying and selling of the stock will increase. The volume of, you know, buying and selling will increase in the stock market. Why is that so? Understand, each and everything is connected. Okay, why this liquidity will increase? Why is that so? See, the first reason is number of shares have increased. So more shares will be bought and sold. Yeah. And the seventh reason, see here, seventh reason is also connected. Adjustment in market price. Let's just say, for example, you know, this two lakh equity shares were there, bonus, sorry, not bonus, existing shares were two lakh equity shares. And let's just the bonus scheme, the bonus which was announced was one for every two, 50% bonus. If you have two shares, if you have two shares, then one additional share will be given to you for free, one for every two. So that means 50%, 50% bonus was given, okay? So let's calculate, two lakh equity share, existing shares into one by two bonus scheme, that's equal to one lakh additional shares, yeah? One lakh additional shares. So what happened after the bonus issue? 
from 2 lakh the total shares became 3 lakh 1 lakh bonus issue is there now from 2 lakh it became th 3 lakh so in the stock market what will happen to the market price in the stock market the market price will fall there will be adjustment in the market price it will fall it's a simple demand and supply thing supply of the shares have increased in the market isn't it before there were 2 lakh now there are 3 lakh shares so of course the price market price will fall isn't it and practically if we see now you know uh, theoretically theoretically the price falls by the same proportion by the proportion to the uh, the same proportion of the bonus okay one for every two means 50 percent so price will also fall by 50 percent but practically we can see that in the stock market what happens the price falls by 48 percent 49.5 percent like that fine because practical world is a little bit different fine so that is what will happen adjustment in st stock market price okay so price will fall so if price falls then of course more stock will be bought and sold in the market because see middle class investor and smallest investors what do they think if they have 2000 in their pocket they will not buy one share of 2000 no they will buy 10 shares of 200 isn't it that's the basic mentality of a middle class investor small investor isn't it so that is why liquidity in the stock will increase is that clear do you understand the logic price has fallen now and it's a natural thing okay don't think that the company is bad the fundamentals are bad or something no it's not like that it's a natural thing bonus happened of course of course hundred percent there will be a fall in the stock market price is it clear yes and then the eighth one is there will be no cash flow because of bonus issue no cash flow no cash will move okay because it's just internal funds only reserves and surplus have been used to issue uh, bonus issue okay reserves and surplus have been converted into equity share capital is that clear and here we are only talking about equity share capital okay there is no preference share capital connected with bonus issue no bonus issue is about equity share capital only is that clear so these were the effects of bonus issue increase in equity share capital decrease in reserves no impact on net assets reduction in eps and other per share values favorable act considered by the market because of more reserves okay and then liquidity in the stock increases because of fall in the market price and as well as the number of shares have increased adjustment in market price market price will fall in the same proportion to the bonus okay the bonus scheme and no cash flow okay these were the effects of bonus issue now let's go to the types of bonus issue and discuss that in very much detail now as i said there are two different types of bonus issue so the first one is issuing fully paid up bonus shares to existing shareholders for free okay and the second one is converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up by way of bonus call is that clear these are the two different types of bonus issue the most common is this first one now understand issuing fully paid up bonus shares is regulated by the section 63 of the companies act and here this one is regulated by the regulation 39 of the table f under schedule 1 of the companies act fine this is how we have two different types of bonus issue and let's understand this example first you already know this it's really simple let's just say existing capital is 4 lakh equity shares of 10 each and the bonus scheme the proportion was 1 for every 10 for every 10 shares one additional share will be given to the existing shareholders only okay so how will you calculate you already know this it's really simple 4 lakh existing equity shares into 1 divided by 10 so 40,000 equity shares okay 40,000 equity shares so what will be the total shares after the bonus issue these are the bonus shares total shares after the bonus issue will be existing 4 lakh equity shares plus 40,000 equity shares that will be 4 lakh 40,000 shares okay and what will be the value of the bonus what will be the value of the bonus value of the bonus is what 40,000 shares yeah the bonus shares into fully paid up right these are fully paid up bonus shares so into 10 into 10 that's equal to 4 lakh the value of the bonus will be 4 lakh okay in money in money terms fine so this is issuing fully paid up bonus shares and then we have converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up now what will happen here here the shares will be partly paid up and the company will announce that you know we are making a bonus call okay your partly paid up shares will be converted into fully paid up you don't have to pay the final call money let's just say seven seven rupees are paid up or six rupees are paid up and the remaining balance what will be there now four rupees three rupees two rupees that will be that will be you know waved off the shareholders don't have to pay that money their shares will be made fully paid up by the company itself by utilizing the free reserves by utilizing the free reserves only all right so see here how this will happen existing capital is 4 lakh equity share for example of 10 each but they are partly paid up eight paid up here it was fully paid up 
here it is partly paid up so now what is the bonus scheme the bonus scheme is convert partly paid shares into fully paid up okay so two rupees is pending so that two rupees shareholders don't have to pay directly the shares will be made fully paid up so see it's really simple what will happen the final call money now what is the final call money final final call money is see here four lakh equity shares are there four lakh equity shares into what is the pending amount two two rupees because eight is paid up now so two is pending so into two that's equal to eight lakh eight lakh rupees is the final call money this will be the bonus value final call due is equal to bonus value four lakh into two that's equal to eight lakh okay so this is what we have these two different types of bonus issue issuing fully paid up bonus shares and converting partly paid shares into fully paid up now it's very simple the accounting treatment is also nothing it's really really easy okay it's nothing the only bit complicated thing i will not say it's complicated it's really simple only but it looks complicated but believe me after watching this video at the end you will see it's nothing okay we have to understand properly the provisions of the companies act properly okay that is very uh, important okay and it's bit complicated and looks complicated to you but it will not be after watching this video so let's go to the provisions of the companies act now let's start with the provisions of the companies act first we'll be talking about section 63 subsection 1 of the companies act which deals with sources for bonus issue for issuing fully paid up bonus shares and then we'll move on to the regulation 39 table f under schedule 1 of the companies act which talks about sources for bonus issue for converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up yeah the bonus call so we have to discuss this separately and the main question that should pop up in your mind is what do you mean by sources for bonus issue see it's really simple you all know bonus issue happens bonus issue happens from reserves and surplus yeah so you should know properly according to the law according to the company's act which reserves and surplus you can utilize the company can utilize to do bonus issue and that is what we are discussing right now is that okay yes so see here we have so many reserves over here list yeah so we have mainly here four different reserves we have crr capital redemption reserve and then we have sp securities premium and then we have cr capital reserve and then we have free reserves free reserves means what according to the companies act the reserves which are available for distribution as dividend are called as free reserves for example for example general reserve profit and loss yeah dividend equalization fund investment fluctuation fund after adjustment of the fluctuation workman compensation reserve after adjustment of the workman liabilities yeah all these are free reserves is that clear yes so first let's talk little bit about crr because crr is new for you you already know what is securities premium capital reserve general reserve and all what is crr see crr is you know it's a reserve that is created for replacement of capital yeah you will learn more about this in section 55 of the companies act in redemption of preference share chapter okay it is created to replace the capital and the only utilization of crr is you know what to issue fully paid up bonus shares that's the only utilization of crr you can't use crr for any other purpose that is why the first position the first priority of you know reserve utilization goes to crr while doing fully paid up bonus share while issuing fully paid up bonus shares is that clear so you have to properly follow strictly follow the sequence in this sequence only you have to utilize the reserves first is crr capital redemption reserve and then if there is no money or you don't have crr then you will move on to securities premium you already know what is securities premium what is securities premium when you issue what shares at a premium then that extra money which you receive that goes to securities premium isn't it yes section 52 of the companies act okay that is what you will use understand here also there is one restriction what is the restriction the restriction is that you can only use the securities premium which is realized in cash now you will say sir what is realized in cash in cash and without cash it's really simple let's take an example you already know this yeah see for example let's just say you issued shares at a premium for cash yeah you received cash in the bank right so in that case securities premium is realized in cash securities premium is realized in cash because against this you have received the money bank account debit isn't it you have received the money so this is realized in cash this securities premium you can utilize in cash you can utilize but but without cash what do you mean by without cash issued shares at premium for consideration for consideration means anything other than cash okay for example let's just say you purchase machinery okay you purchase machinery or trucks something like that and you issued shares for that yeah you didn't pay cash you issued 
shares to that. See your asset account to equity share capital to securities premium. Yeah, you should shares at premium. That is why securities premium will come into the picture. But against this securities premium, you have not received cash. You have received machinery. You have received some piece of land, something like that. Is that clear? So this sort of securities premium cannot be cannot be utilized over here without cash wrong you cannot use that securities premium for issuing fully paid up bonus shares is it clear simple and the same case goes with the capital reserve also here also it has to be in cash okay without cash you cannot utilize you understood now what is in cash without cash yeah realized in cash realized without cash okay not realized okay yeah, not realized fine and then fourth one general reserve revenue reserve yeah these are free reserves. See, understand, you have to follow the sequence properly. First, CRR, securities premium, capital reserve, and then, and then you have to go free reserve. Now, in the free reserve, there is no sequence. Yeah, you can use PL first and then general reserve, yeah, and then dividend equalization fund. There is no, uh, what do you say, there is no sequence inside the free reserves. Okay, any free reserves you can use in any sequence. Fine. So, this is what you have to do. First, CRR, and then securities premium and then capital reserve and then free reserves in any sequence. Now let's jump on to the converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up. Now here the reserves which you can use for converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up are only the free reserves. Yeah, The company's act says you can use only free reserves and, and one more thing you can use that is capital reserve in cash. Only these two things free reserves and capital reserve realized in cash okay rest is not allowed crr not allowed securities premium not allowed okay you will only use what capital reserve in cash and the free reserves is that clear it's really simple and straightforward okay no difficulty at all now check some notes over here revaluation reserve cannot be utilized for issue of bonus shares yes you cannot do that because there can be a big manipulation if revaluation reserve is allowed see understand for example let's just say a company is there they don't have crr they don't have securities premium they don't have capital reserve they don't have free reserves also so what they can do is you know what they can do is for example if revaluation reserve utilization was allowed what they could do was for example they could revalue one of their asset one of their land or something yeah immediately what will happen for example from the 90s they had a land uh, you know which the cost was 5 lakh and now they will revalue it to the market value to the fair value let's just say it goes to 1 crore yeah yeah the value is 1 crore now so immediately what will happen there will be revaluation surplus of 95 lakhs so 95 lakhs will go into revaluation reserve they have not sold the land they don't have money against it they have just revalued the land they have just increased the value in the books of accounts and 95 lakhs have gone into revaluation reserve there is no cash there is no cash against it so that is why it's complete manipulation yeah that is why in the company's act revaluation reserve is prohibited to use for issue of bonus is that clear is that clear now these general reserve profit and loss and all what is what here the company has earned the cash right they have made the sales and they have earned the cash and in securities premium also only in cash is allowed here also only in cash is allowed is that clear yeah so revaluation reserve is prohibited and then see the second note in silent questions always assume securities premium is realized in cash now this in cash without cash yeah it will be mentioned in the question whether it is in cash or without cash but sometime the question will be silent securities premium one lakh so in that case what you will do in that case you have to make an assumption securities premium is always realized in cash securities premium is always realized in cash this is what ICI does okay and then capital reserve you have to assume whenever question is silent regarding capital reserve you have to assume it is not realized in cash not realized in cash is that clear yes you got it and then third is the definition of free reserve free reserves are the reserve which are available for distribution and dividend now in the question mostly what happens you know you will only have general reserve revenue reserve profit and loss yeah surplus like this will be given but for example let's just say workman compensation reserve is given Will you touch that? No, you will not touch that. Only if the question says that, you know, the adjustment of liabilities is done and it is a free reserve now, only then you will utilize. Okay, in silent question, you will not utilize. And in investment fluctuation fund also, it is free reserve only after adjustment of fluctuation. If it is just given, then you will not use. It's not a free reserve. And then dividend equalization fund is also kind of like that only. All right, 
So this is how you have to go about it. Mostly directly, which are the free reserves? General reserve, profit and loss. Clear? So this is what? Sources for bonus issue. Strictly follow the sequence. Okay, CRR, SP, CR, CRR, SP, CR, and then free reserves in any sequence. All right. So this was the sources for bonus issue. Now let's move on to the conditions of bonus issue. Now see here we have the conditions for bonus issue as per section 63 subsection 2 of the Companies Act which is really simple and straightforward. Let's discuss this one by one. It's really simple. See the first one is bonus issue must be authorized by its article of association. Yeah, a company cannot do bonus issue unless and until it is permitted by its article of association. Is that clear? But let's just say for example it is not permitted. If it is not permitted then what the company will do? Will the company not do the bonus issue? No. The company will have to alter, modify its article of association according to the section 14 of the Companies Act by passing the special resolution and all. Yeah, there is a procedure for that. You already know that, right? So that is what the company has to do and then do the bonus issue. Fine. Okay, that's the first point. The second is board of directors have to recommend the bonus issue and then get the shareholders authorization in the general meeting of the company. Fine. Because shareholders approval is needed, right? Yes. And then the third is, see here, there is no default, yeah, there is no failure in repayment of principal and in payment of interest in respect of public deposits or debt securities issued by issued by the company, yeah. There is no failure in the payment of debt. Is that clear? Yes, there should not be any default. And then fourth is, see here, there is no default in payment of statutory dues to employees. What are statutory dues? Statutory dues means gratuity, yeah, bonus to employees, provident fund not this bonus okay the normal bonus okay yeah provident fund esi contribution all these are statute reduced so there should not be any failure in these payment okay fine simple and then you have see here fifth one existing shares should be fully paid up yes existing shares should be fully paid up but let's just say for example the shares are not fully paid up they are partly paid up then the company will have two options understand the first option is make the final call okay make the final call and receive the money from the shareholders which will make the existing shares fully paid up but let's just say for example there are calls in arrears yeah some shareholders are you know failing to pay the money there are calls in arrears if there are calls in arrears then what will happen the company will have to forfeit the shares yeah cancel those shares of shareholders not making the payment and then issue the bonus is that clear this is the first option the second option is the second option is the company can do another bonus issue, another type of bonus issue, which is that you already know, bonus call. Make the shares fully paid up by way of bonus call, converting the partly paid up shares into fully paid up. That's the option two. Option one is what? Just normally receiving the money, making the call, receiving the money. If there are calls in arrears, forfeit those shares and then go for bonus. Option two is give the bonus call, make the bonus call, convert the partly paid up shares into fully paid up by way of bonus is that clear right and then there is six condition should comply with conditions as may be prescribed what does this mean it means you know you have to comply with the SEBI regulations okay so we'll go to the SEBI regulations only now but before that there are a couple of you know provisions of the companies act only see here the bonus shares shall not be issued in lieu of dividend yeah this bonus shares right bonus issue it is not a replacement of dividend or dividend is not a replacement for bonus okay it's not connected is that clear yes that's what is said in the section 63 subsection 3 of the companies act and then see here the company which has announced once announced the decision of its board recommending a bonus issue shall not subsequently withdraw the same is it clear once the bonus is announced yeah by the board then already the effect will flow into the market then you cannot withdraw the bonus is that clear that is what is being said in the rule 14 of the companies act yeah the company's rules 2014 is that clear? share capital and debentures fine yes now let's see the sebi regulations now see here we have sebi icdr regulations issue of capital and disclosure requirements it's really simple and straightforward we'll be discussing three regulation regulation 293 294 and 295 okay and let me tell you that sebi regulations and companies act are almost similar only okay they will not be conflicting each other it's same only they are complementary it's just that sebi regulation will be more detailed and some extra provisions are there okay so i will focus on those extra provisions only rest you can see them in the study material it's same only fine 
yes so let's start with the first regulation we have over here regulation 293 conditions for bonus issue which is same as companies act let me just show you how is it same to the companies act see here conditions for bonus issue the first one is regarding article of association it has to be you know it is it should be permissible in article of association and then see b it is not defaulted in the payment of interest or principal in respect of fixed deposit or debt security issued by it and then c the c point it has not defaulted in respect of the statute reduce and then d is all the shares must be fully paid up it should not be partly paid up and then e is the extra point yeah this e is the extra point that is promoter or director should not be a fugitive economic offender you already know now what has happened in india lots and lots of people have ran away so that is why this extra provision has been added is that clear yes so now then we have regulation 294 see the regulation 294 restriction on a bonus issue now here also you know many are same only same as companies act see here uh leave the first two points see the third point okay see the third point a bonus issue shall be made only out of the free reserves yes we have already seen that sources for bonus issue yeah that is the section 63 subsection 1 of the companies act and then you know uh what do you say the securities premium and capital reserve should be realized in cash reserve created by the revaluation of fixed asset shall not be capitalized for this purpose yes we already know that i have already told you revaluation reserve cannot be used and then see the fourth point bonus shares shall not be issued in lieu of dividend yes and then fifth yeah we have to discuss the fifth one okay so see regulation 294 everything is same except three extra provisions are there which we have to discuss see it's really simple let me just tell you what is there over here see these two provisions now it's about the convertible debt instruments what it says is that whenever you have convertible debt instruments in the company what you have to do is you have to reserve equity shares for them you have to make a provision for them and then when they will be converted at the time of conversion they will also be given a bonus issue in the same proportion how you gave to the existing shareholders at the time of the bonus issue for example let's just say you know 10 years back you had issued a uh, convertible debt instruments and their maturity will be happening let's just say you know now this year only but in between these 10 years you have made a bonus issue so now when these uh, debentures will be maturing yeah their time of conversion at that time you will have to give them bonus shares also you have to make a provision for them that's what these two provisions say see here make a reservation of equity shares of the same class in favor of outstanding compulsory convertible debt instruments yeah fcds and pcds fully convertible debentures and partly convertible debentures yeah that comes under this in proportion to the convertible part only in proportion to the convertible part only because in pcds what happens partly convertible na so for the convertible part you have to make the reservation not that reservation you have to reserve the equity shares okay and then the equity shares so reserved will be issued at the time of conversion on the same terms or the same proportion at which the bonus shares were issued to the existing equity shareholder the same way you have to give the same ratio whatever ratio you decided now at that same ratio is it clear yes and then see the third thing superior voting right equity shares do you know what are these these are the new shares see these superior voting right shares you know they will have extra voting right normally what happens one share will have one voting right but superior voting right shares these shares will have at least two votes per share okay these are given to the promoters and the executives of the company to retain the control of the company even after the ipo and all the promoters or the founders will lose the control now that is why these shares are introduced okay so now bonus shares will be given on these shares also superior voting right but they will not get superior voting right shares no the normal shares only see here bonus issue on the sr equity shares superior voting right equity shares will have no additional benefits they will be like ordinary shares only okay will have no additional benefits what have i written over here bonus issue on the sr equity shares will have no additional benefits and they will be like sorry and they will be like they will be like ordinary shares only is it clear that is what is meant by this provision is that clear right and then we have regulation 295 see here completion of bonus issue see the first one bonus issue must be completed after the approval by bod within 15 days from the date of approval by bod if shareholders approval is not required if shareholders approval is not required yeah because of the limit issue yeah uh the board of director they will have a restrictive powers because of that 
they might do bonus issue without the shareholders approval if shareholders approval is not required in that case then within 15 days only you know the bonus will be completed has to be completed but if shareholders approval is required then the time limit increases it is two months two months from the date of approval by bod if shareholders approval is required simple you understand now yeah and then see a bonus issue once announced shall not be withdrawn now this is the same to the companies act right so these were the provisions of the companies act and the sebi regulation that you have understood now let's move on to the accounting treatment of bonus issue which is the most important part okay these are not that much relevant okay let's move on to the accounting treatment now i hope you have completely got the clarity of this now see here we have the accounting treatment of bonus issue and of course the accounting treatment of bonus issue will differ depending upon the type of bonus issue you all know we have two different types of bonus issues we have issuing fully paid up bonus shares to existing shareholders under which we have to pass two journal entries and then we have converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up which we also call as bonus call right so in this we have three journal entries okay so we have to understand this separately so first let's discuss about issuing fully paid up bonus shares two journal entries the first journal entry is announcement of bonus issue when the bonus issue yeah issuing fully paid up bonus share is announced by the board of directors what will happen from the accounting perspective from the accounting perspective understand two things will happen the first is the first is you have to decrease the reserves because you all know bonus is given out of the reserves of the company reserves and surplus so you have to decrease the reserve how do you decrease the reserve you all know in the accounting reserves and surplus comes under equity category to decrease them you have to debit them all right yes so that is what you will do you will debit them and then the second thing that will happen at the announcement of bonus issue is you from the accounting perspective you have to create a dummy account called as bonus to equity shareholders account yeah and you have to increase that account understand the value from reserves will go in that account so reserves have been decreased and the value from reserves reserves are source right so the value from reserves will be credited to this bonus to equity shareholders account the value will go over there so bonus to equity shareholders account comes under equity category so that is increasing now the value is going inside that so to increase that you will have to credit what you have to credit bonus to equity shareholders account it's just a temporary dummy account is that clear right and then what will happen this is the first event yeah announcement of bonus issue at that time what would we do we utilize the reserves and we transfer the value to bonus to equity shareholders the second thing is the bonus shares will be actually issued to the existing shareholders at that time from the accounting perspective what you have to do is this temporary account you have to cancel now tell me in accounting how do you cancel things do you mark wrong or something no you cannot do that in accounting you play with debits and credits so here it was credited to cancel it you have to make an equal debit and that is what you are going to do for example let's just say 1 lakh was credited over here you will debit 1 lakh bonus to equity shareholders account 1 lakh debit and then that 1 lakh will be transferred to equity share capital account equity share capital account will be credited because ultimately what was our goal in bonus issue i explained it in the first instance only that reserves will fall capital will increase that is our net effect ultimate goal decreasing the reserves and surplus and increasing the capital just shuffling of the net assets right so reserves have fallen the value has gone to this temporary account and that temporary account we cancelled over here so the value has to go to ultimately to equity share capital account and that is what we will do we will credit the equity share capital account yeah we will credit the equity share capital account so that means it will be increased is that clear is that clear really simple and straightforward and the most important part is you should know properly utilization of reserve the sequence if you mess up the sequence then you will not get the marks okay understand remember this section 63 subsection 1 of the companies act what it says you have to properly follow the sequence first you will use crr then securities premium in cash only capital reserve in cash only and then free reserves in any sequence yeah general reserve dividend equalization fund pnl account surplus okay these reserves is it clear yes it's very important so this way you will do the uh, you know accounting treatment of issuing fully paid up bonus sheets 
Now let's come to this converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up the bonus call. It's really simple. Here there are three general entries. Now what happens under this in converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up? You all know from the shareholders will not take any money. There is no cash flow in the bonus. In the bonus topic, there is no cash flow at all. Okay. There is no cash flow. Cash is not touched over here. Cash is not affected. What happens in this category is for free of cost, we directly convert partly paid up shares into fully paid up. Yeah. See what will happen. The first is the company will make the final call, making the final call due share final call account debit. Yeah. This is what happens now. First call account, final call account. We will debit that and we'll increase the capital to equity share capital. And then later what happens in normal call in normal call first this entry is passed and then bank account to share final call account isn't it bank account to share final call account over right shares are fully paid up but that we will not do over here we are not going to receive any money over here no 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 because it is free of course the bonus is free of cost for the shareholders yeah their shares are for free of course they are getting converted to fully paid up so in that case we have to bring bonus factor over here yeah, the same concept will come over here also. So see, it's really simple. <laughs> what will happen? Allocation of reserves. The same thing. The same thing will happen. See, allocation of reserve. This is also allocation of reserve only. Reserves are decreased. Yeah. And the value has gone to bonus to equity shareholder. This temporary dummy account. The same thing you will do over here. Allocation of reserves. Reserves will be utilized. It will be used up. Yeah, they are decreasing. So reserves are decreasing means you have to debit reserves comes under equity category if they are decreasing means you have to debit right so that is what you will do you will debit the reserves your yeah, capital reserve realized in cash only that you will debit and then if you don't have that or it is less then you will use the free reserves gr pnl dividend equalization fund you know the sequence right the sequence you know the sequence yeah regulation 39 table f under schedule one of the companies act what you can use you cannot use crr you cannot use sp you can only use capital reserve in cash and free reserves that's all you can use. So that is what and the sequence sequence is very important. Is that clear? Yes. So you will use up the reserves transfer that value to bonus to equity shareholder this temporary dummy account, right? So then what you will do is you will adjust the final call with bonus, you will adjust the final call with bonus. Now how this will happen? It's really simple. See here, here bonus to equity shareholders account was credited. So the same thing you will do here also it was credited now. So the same thing you will do, you will debit it over here and cancel it off. Bonus to equity shareholders account credit. Here you will debit bonus to equity shareholders account debit. It is cancelled. One lakh was credit. For example, you will debit the one lakh and then that one lakh will go to share final call account to share final call account. Yeah. Now understand share final call account also is cancelled. See here it was debited. Here it was credited. Debit, credit, cancel. Okay. So ultimately what happened in both the cases? Understand, see from the bird eye view, what happened? What happened? Here also reserves got debited and capital got credited. Yeah, rest all the account gets cancelled. Bonus to equity, bonus to equity, it cancelled. Debit, credit, it cancelled. Right? Reserves account debit to capital. That's what happened. Reserves decreased, capital increased. Here also the same thing. Share final call account debited, credited, cancelled. Bonus to equity shareholders credited, debited, cancelled. Ultimately, what happened? Ultimately, reserves got debited and capital got credited. Okay, that is the net effect. Reserves will decrease and capital will increase. Is that clear? So these were the general entries for issuing fully paid up bonus shares and then bonus call converting partly paid up shares into fully paid up. Fine. You understood this. It's easy and straightforward. Now, the second thing is the balance sheet effect. What will happen in the balance sheet? The same thing reserves will decrease capital will increase reserves will decrease capital will increase that is what you have to do in the balance sheet and then in notes to accounts you have to show that you know the number of shares also increase yeah because of this number of shares increases because of this this converting here number of shares doesn't increase understand here the existing shares only are made fully paid okay the value of capital will increase of course the paid up capital will increase but the shares will stay the same only but here here new shares will come new shares will come right so for this for this additional disclosure is required see here in issued capital you have to write a line for example let's just say in issued capital you have you know uh, just for example 10 lakh shares and then let's just say for example you know uh, 1 lakh shares are new okay bonus shares then you have to write out of the above 1 lakh shares at rupees let's say the face value is rupees 10 10 each were issued by way of 
bonus is that clear this disclosure you have to write that one lakh shares are you know bonus shares they were issued under the bonus scheme is that clear simple and straightforward you understood this right now one more adjustment can be there in the question okay so that is also very important to understand what is that one more adjustment authorized capital adjustment now what can happen is you know after the bonus after the bonus your sus subscribed and paid up capital is should subscribe and paid up capital can be more than authorized capital after the bonus issue yeah mostly this happens in many questions so if there is a situation like this then what you have to do really simple and straightforward see for example for example let's keep, take an example 80000 shares are there okay before the bonus and then you issued a bonus 3 4 every 4 3 4 every 4 for every 4 shares you will be given additional 3 shares see understand you already know this 80000 into 3 divided by 4 right so 60000 additional shares bonus share will be issued so 80000 plus 60000 how much is that 140000 shares this is after the bonus issue after the bonus issue the total number of shares will be 140000 shares now if you compare this with the authorized capital authorized capital is let's just say for example 1 lakh so you see this is more than authorized capital subscribe issued subscribe and paid up capital is more than authorized capital if such a situation arises in the question what you have to do is you have to increase the authorized capital you have to increase the authorized capital in the balance sheet you have to increase that okay so see in this scenario an ordinary resolution should be passed for increasing the authorized capital okay this is that that's the law matter two ways to increase the authorized capital there are two ways to increase the authorized capital what you can do is understand it's really simple one lakh shares are there now how much additional do you need one lakh forty thousand is the subscribe and paid up capital so you need forty thousand additional isn't it forty thousand shares so you will increase the authorized capital limit by forty thousand that is called as additional number of shares required you can see now clearly one lakh forty here one lakh so how much additional extra you need forty thousand so just increase the authorized capital by 40,000 shares. This is the first approach. Okay, and ICI also prefers this approach. Yeah, if you will see the, uh, what do you say, solutions of ICI, yeah, of the past year papers, then they mostly follow this approach. The second approach is, both are right, okay, it's not like, uh, you know, one is right or the other is wrong. No, 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 both are right. The second one is, you can increase the authorized capital limit by the bonus issue. 60,000 shares are there, now, bonus issue. So you can increase from 1 lakh to 1 lakh 60,000 okay number of bonus shares that you issue 60,000 shares you have two options either you can increase the authorized capital to this only 1 lakh 40,000 shares or you can you can increase the authorized capital by the bonus shares 1 lakh plus 60,000 okay 1 lakh 60,000 okay two options you have either additional number of shares required or number of bonus shares issued is it clear so this is how you have to do this fine so this was the bonus shares chapter i mean the topic we have right issue also but now what we have to do is you have understood the whole concept regarding this now we have to solve problems on this and then only we'll move on to the right issue okay without solving the problems of bonus we cannot go to right issue so let's solve some problems of bonus issue okay probably in the uh, next video okay this video has already been stretched too long so that's it for this video See you in the next video. Bye.